A father of a Seminole Heights murder victim can't seem to shake it. That one question, would his son still be alive if his city bus route was not changed? News Channel 8's Corey Davis joining us now live on North 15th Street in Tampa with more from that victim's family. Keith, good evening to you. Anthony Neboa's father is just playing this over and over in his head. He is wishing today that his son didn't get on that bus and ended up here in Seminole Heights Thursday night. A grieving father telling us a twist of circumstances left his son, Anthony Neboa, on the other side of a killer's gun. My son meets his end at, at the hand of this assassin. My son, my, 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 my good kid. A ruthless killer murdering Anthony, a 20-year-old with autism, just trying to get home after work, trying to be more independent. I always told my son you could do anything. But his father tells us new changes to the city bus route left Anthony in Seminole Heights, a neighborhood he wasn't familiar with. He knows the bus route. My son, my son knows the bus route. But we know it was some changes, crazy changes. We're told Anthony took a route he wasn't used to because his usual bus stop was shut down. It was part of hundreds of route changes across the county. Last month, you see all the bus stop signs covered up. Covered up, nobody know nothing, what's going to happen, what is bus going to be. The family knows that the killer is ultimately to blame for the murder, but they can't help but wonder if Anthony's life would have been spared had his bus stop had not been changed. I think that he would have been alive. Um due to the fact that if we knew about these changes ahead of time, he would have been home. And the family is telling us that these killings were cowardly. They want the people behind the trigger or a person behind the trigger to pay the ultimate price. They're asking for the death penalty if these people or person is caught. Now, as for Hart, the agency that runs the bus system, they just released a statement telling us that these killings were senseless. Their thoughts are with the families. And they are working with police right now on safety measures around this area. Back well, they're to all you. just looking for answers, trying to explain the unexplainable. Hopefully, we'll get to the end of this soon. Corey Davis, live in Seminole Heights. Thank you.